Ah! <laughs> Greetings, friend. Greetings. Now, are you in desperate or dire need of comic book and pop culture related content? If so, you come to the right place, yes? Because Simple Man's Comics got everything you need. Everything you could ever desire. All the comic book stuff, all the pop culture stuff right here in this blessed YouTube channel. Yes, 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 yes. You've come to the right place. Yes, you have. Simple Man's Comics. It's for you. It's for you. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Wednesday night, so we know it is the new edition of the Hot and Cold List. I'm Brian Wood. This is Simple Man's Comics. As always, I got my co-host with me, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. Go and introduce yourself. Thank you, Brian. As he said, I am Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. Happy to be here on Simple Man's Comics for another edition of the Hot and Cold Show. On this show... We're bringing to you a brand new piece of content, a list put together by our spec super team. This team is comprised of eight different contributors, all bringing their unique views on the industry, highlighting different trends in the hobby, both hot and cold. Right, and up on the screen right now, we have the list of contributors, except we did con Audible tonight, right? Because Ben Stein was unable to be here this week to provide his pick. So we do have a stand-in for him. You want to talk about who that stand-in is? Absolutely. Just we don't have Ben Stein here tonight, but we brought in a guest substitute who is absolutely on that level or greater. We brought in Tim Walker. He may be new to you, but he's a CBSI OG. He has a new column on comicbookinvest.com called The Walker Report. And again, while that column is new, Tim has been around for a long time, dating back to the old Google Plus days of CBSI. Tim is a retailer. He has an eBay store. He has a lot of experience in hobby. And a lot of us in CBSI, we've been learning from him for a long time. So he had a great view on the market, the hobby, and trends in general. And rounding out this list for the picks this week, we have Topher S., who writes the True First article on comicbookinvest.com. Andy Tomlin, who you might know from the Indie Spotlight article and the new Indie Spotlight series on Simple Man's Comics YouTube channel. We have Peter Rana, who writes Usual Suspects and Dollar Bin Digging. We have Dan Piercy, who writes The Reading Pile for ComicBookInvest.com. We have Mel V from the Mighty Mel V YouTube channel. We have Mr. Cool himself, Mike Morello, who writes the Cover Tunes article on ComicBookInvest.com. As well as Clint Jocelyn, who writes Run the Table for ComicBookInvest.com. So, Jack, what do you think of the lineup? Oh, I love this lineup. I think we put together a great team of diverse voices. They cover it all from high to low, from modern to vintage. I think that this team has a great eye on the market. Right, I agree with you. So, with that being said, you ready to just kick off into the hot list this week? Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's get hot. First off on the hot list this week, we'll go right with the guest, and that was Tim Walker, and he chose Spider-Verse books, correct? Correct. Now, yeah, we don't have a video entry this week from Tim, but Tim told us that post Into the Spider-Verse movie, he is still seeing sales, strong sales, from Spider-Verse related books. While the prices may have dropped from their all-time highs when the movie was kind of in theaters and the talk of the community, sales and interest in these properties, in these characters, is still very strong. We're still seeing toys ship into stores. Target is still restocking those Into the Spider-Verse toys. And I think that these characters are showing signs of being here to stay. Right. So we might not have a video for Tim, but as you can see on the screen right now, my face is totally covered up with some Spider-Verse graphics. So thanks for that pick, Tim. And I think Jack and I both agree as well as the comic book community, that Spider-Verse is definitely heating up and is hot at the moment. So coming up next on this week's Hot Cold List, let's check in with Mel V from the Mighty Mel V YouTube channel. Mel V coming at you post-East Coast Comic Con. It was a great show, but I'm here to tell you what's hot. What's hot? Spawn, starting with numbers 260 and up. They are starting to rise in value. If you check recent eBay sales, you see they're hitting the double digits. So check those Spawn boxes out. So, Jack, Mel V's hot pick for this week is Spawn Books. Do you agree with him? 
Oh, I think this is a great pick. Um, speculators who have been in this hobby for a long time have long known that there's back issue gold in Spawn. There's a certain run of numbers that are extremely low printed, but yet in high demand with people putting together Spawn runs. And those issues have always popped in the secondary market. But over time, we're seeing the run of issues that you can success with continue to expand. And that number of issues in which are profitable get larger and larger. And I think a lot of that is due to an increased demand in Spawn. And some of that demand is coming from some recent news that we've gotten at East Coast Comic Con, where Todd McFarlane announced Spawn 300, a 72-page giant-sized anniversary issue that will feature Jerome O'Pena, Greg Capullo, and, T and J. Scott Campbell doing interior art as well as covers. And the issue is going to be co-written by Scott Snyder. So there is a ton of buzz on this $7.99 cover price issue. On top of that, at that announcement, Todd also announced that there was some progress being made with the Spawn movie. He said they're in the financing phase, that it's taken a long time, and that he understands that, but that that's kind of the Hollywood process, but that they're working on it, and that it's coming along, and we're going to get that Spawn movie to build on that Spawn hype, especially with them crossing into issue 301, which will break the record for the longest-running independent comic series run. A lot of times shipments of books that big tend to get damaged, so it could be hard to find a 9-8. May or may not be. But either way, it's going to be a great issue, and they've definitely been building up to it. If you've read any of the solicits from the past five or six issues in Spawn, first line is how they're building up to issue 300, and now we know why. Thanks, Mel, for that pick. We both agree, and that deserves a spot on the hot list this week. So next, we are going to check in with our resident Joe Cool expert, Mike Morello, for his hot pick of the week. CBSI. Mike Morello from Cover Tunes coming at you with this week's hot pick. Anything and everything Claremont era X-Men. I mean, whether it's Keys, whether it's the middle issues, well, it doesn't matter if it's Cockrum, Burn, makes no difference who the artist is. Collectors are treating these issues, no matter what number they are, like they're all Keys. And I see these at shops. I see them come in. They're gone that same day. Prices go up and up and up. And they are starting to get out of reach for a lot of people. Um, obviously, 101 is huge because of the movie coming, as is everything Dark Phoenix. Anything Wolverine related, like 94, Giant Sized, I mean, you name it. They're all going up. They're all getting out of control. Um, I would say hold them, but I mean, you can flip these all day in low and mid grades. Um, you know, I think that you should get the best grades you can for your own PCs um, and hang on to these. Because these are becoming some major, major keys, um, like blue chip level type stuff. And I don't think they're coming back down, especially not now with Disney buying uh, the X-Men franchise from Fox. So this is my scorching hot pick for the week. Jack, I'm going to tell you this is one pick that I freaking love. Mike's talking about the Claremont X-Men run. We got Dark Phoenix movie about to come out in theaters. Definitely hot. What do you think, Jack? Obviously, we've got so many classic issues in that Claremont X-Men run. And I think a lot of people are real bullish on X-Men right now, as am I, because of what's going on in developing with Disney taking over these Fox Marvel properties. I think there's a lot of renewed spec interest in the X-Men. Um, I think Dark Phoenix will have to wait and see how kind of the performance of that movie is. I know that that is one of the favorite storylines of readers. And I just don't know that that movie is going to do it justice. But I have faith in Mickey Mouse and the Disney machine to do X-Men right. So I've got my eye on a lot of that Claremont X-Men run. I'll tell you, I'm also looking at a lot of that 90s Jim Lee X-Men stuff, as I think that a lot of that is going to get attention as well. But I, I think Mike's hit the nail on the head. A lot of this stuff is hot. It's hot now. It's the time to be pulling the trigger on a lot of this stuff before it gets to that scorching level. So once again, thank you, Mike, for that great pick. And it definitely deserves a spot on the hot list. Coming in next for the weekly hot picks, we have comicbookinvest.com's Andy Spotlight writer, Andy Tomberlin. Hey, what's up, everybody? Andy here with uh, CBSI uh, Indie Spotlight Series with my hot pick. Uh, right now, it seems to be horror. Anything horror-related, whether it be pre-code horror, whether it be Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, uh, whether it be new Dark Horse releases like Last Stop on the Red Line, 
a lot of hot stuff having to do with horror right now. I mean, we saw the rejected number one horror take off. Uh, a lot of small independent publishers going to the horror theme, uh, and it's working for them. It's working, working for everybody right now. That's my hot pick. So, Jack, and he's talking horror comics. What do you think? I love this pick, and obviously you know I love this pick because you and I talk about this on the Bolo Show on Thursdays, right here on Simpleman's Comics, 9 p.m., live every week. Check out the replay whenever you have time. Also on audio, on Stitcher, iTunes, wherever you listen to your audio podcasts. But we talk about this all the time. Horror's been hot. <clears throat> excuse me. Horror's been hot for a, quite a while. There's been a real trend in the hobby, not just, again, in the hobby within comics, and graphic novels, but we're also seeing it play out in other forms of media like TV and movies. Um, horror movies are becoming more successful, not only at the box office, but they're becoming more successful critically. And that has really translated into all art forms and all forms of media. Uh, we've seen the resurgence of Immortal Hulk taking the Incredible Hulk to kind of new heights and levels, uh, new darkness. We see what Donny Kiss is doing with his kind of gothic horror story with Venom. And it's really kind of bleeding over into what we're seeing on the indie scene with all these indie horror titles popping on the secondary market. A lot of titles that I think a few years ago would have been overlooked and looked at as kind of fringe, kind of genre-based titles are really becoming at the forefront of the hobby and of the industry. So I love this pick. I think it's spot on. Horror stuff is hot from modern to golden age. I think it's a great pick. Right, and I agree. Um, I mean, he ranged everything from pre-code horror all the way up to current horror. And there's no doubt if you're a pre-code horror collector, you're aware of what some of those books go for, some of what those prices go for. I'm talking like raw, like 0 0.5, 1.0, 2 .0 grades, going for crazy amount of money. And then all the way up to now with the great stories that are being written by Cullen Bunn, um, Tim Seeley, and as you mentioned, all the movies that have been coming out, there's, there's there's people that are hot on horror right now, and it's great to see good horror books come out, not those like campy, kind of crazy stories, but definitely deserves to be on the hot list. So thanks, Andy, for your pick this week. So our next pick this week comes from the comicbookinvest.com's usual suspects writer, and that's Peter Renna. What's going on, everybody? So what's hot this week? Well, with con season in full swing and the weather warming up here in the Northeast and flea markets jumping all over the place, now's the perfect time to go dollar bin digging. I did that at East Coast Comic Con just on Friday. I probably should have filmed this there, but uh, opportunity missed. What are you going to do? But I was able to grab a couple of books. Uh, if you follow my Instagram, you already see them. So follow along real quick. Grab some Middleton Supergirls, which I always grab when I see them in the boxes. Some James John Batgirls, always good grabs. Uh, those CRC Wonder Woman books I just wrote about this week in Dollar Bin Digging, 17 and 18. And you can't leave behind any Adam Hughes when you find them. So uh, hit those bins. You never know what you'll find for a buck. It's not a big buy-in. You can get covers you want, books you want to read, or just try things out. I mean, it's only a dollar. Anyway, that's what's hot this week. So, Jack, Peter's talking about how hot dollar bins are right now. Do you agree or disagree with this? I am in total agreement with what Peter Renna said right here. I think now is the time to strike on dollar bins. Dollar bins tend to go hot and cold. Um, at any point in time, they can honestly be on both sides of this list. And I know a lot of times, speculators, if you spend a lot of time dollar bin digging and you jump into those dollar bins and you go through several trips to your, whether it's your local LCS or a uh, comic book convention, and you kind of strike out, you start to get down on the dollar box digging, you start to kind of fade towards those wall books. But now is the time to strike on these dollar bins, and I'll tell you why. It's the beginning of convention season. So dealers who have been buying all these collections, loading up on all of these books, taking these books that they don't want to put on their walls and in their back issue bins, throwing them in dollar bins, they may not be up to speed on what's going on. They might have filled those boxes months ago, and we know how quickly books pop on the market. So any book that maybe have popped in the last two or three months, they not have pulled out of that dollar box. And this is your opportunity. And a lot of people across the country are reporting to us via social media, some serious success coming out of dollar bins. So I think over the next couple of months, dollar bins are going to be hot. I think you should really make sure that you're spending your time in your dollar bins if you're going to any summer conventions, especially early summer conventions, because like Peter said, and he's the dollar bin digging expert, they're hot right now. Because, and especially at Comic Con, if you go all three days or just say go the last day, 
that's a great time to do dollar bid digging because dealers might be aware of what they have, but they don't want to take it home. So they start throwing one in 25s, one in 50s, all different type of ratio variants right into those dollar bin boxes or up to, you know, $2 boxes. Last day at Baltimore last year, I went to one dealer. I bought a whole bunch of 1 in 10s, 1 in 25s for a dollar a piece, Transformers, oh, yeah. a bunch of Witcher because I knew Netflix was coming out. So definitely hit those dollar bin boxes up. And that's why it's on the hot list. So our next hot pick this week comes from true first writer himself, Topher S. Welcome back, kids. I'm FOMO the Puppet, here to tell you what's scorching this week. Topher S, writer of CBS Eyes, true first couldn't be here, and he asked me to fill in. Considering the fact that I can't pass on anything hot, and because this jerk has his hand inside me, I said, yeah. Not a bad gig if you ask me. A few hot tips for free bags and boards and a case of full logo. So here's what's blazing hot, y'all. This week, the Boston Bruins are eating them up. Florida's on fire. We need a better Florida artist. And Erin Burnett. Well, she's always hot. As for comics, the Dark Horse Netflix deal is smoking. Good luck to all you speculators trying to guess which books to hoard. My money's on Lady Killer. Screw you, CBSI Top 10 Guru Benes. You're costing my hand money. Until next week, kiddos, this is FOMO the Puppet saying, why not try CBSI? Yowie wowie! <laughs> what the? <laughs> Jack. <laughs> We got, we got the hot pick puppet. I'm telling you, Topher S., the man of many faces. Last week, we had the mass speculator. This week, we've got the speculating puppet. But either way, I love the pick. I love the pick last week. I love the pick this week. It's the only pick returning on the hot list. And hey, again, we didn't say there were rules on this list. We didn't say this couldn't happen. And the reality of, of what's going on in the market is Dark Horse books are hotter this week than they were last week. The, the hottest book probably released last week on New Comic Book Day was a Dark Horse book. So you look at it and you look at where the trends are going. I think Dark Horse books will continue to be hot. As you're at those conventions like we talked about, make sure you're looking for those Dark Horse number ones. And make sure you're looking through your previews catalog. Because again, we talked about this. First look means first look. It tends to come in the future. So be looking at those previews catalogs. Talk to your LCS owners about pre-ordering those Dark Horse number ones because there's a good chance there's going to be some great long-term and some short-term spec plays mixed in there. Right. And it's important also, yeah, first look means kind of future, but it might be a first look, but Netflix has already proven that they're doing some of their older titles. So Dark Horse all around, older and newer, is hot because of both of those reasons. So the next hot pick this week comes from the Reading Power writer, Dan Piercy. Hey guys, this is Dan Piercy of dpiercyscomics.com, which forwards to my article on CBSI, The Reading Pile. My hot pick for this week would be Alex Ross' art with a slight caveat. I think Alex Ross's art has always been respected, his superhero work but not necessarily collected or coveted. But now that we're starting to see some of his work on Immortal Hulk and some things like this, um, like these, these Planet of the Apes Cataclysm covers, uh, these were regular covers, and this is a sketch. Here's one here, too. And just for shiz and giggles, here's the $6 million man sketch cover as well. We're starting to see a little bit more respect for his work. Um, these covers that I've just shown, they're not exactly plentiful online. You won't pay incredibly inflated prices for them on eBay. When you see them, uh, they come up once or twice a year, but uh, they're, they're things to look out for. And you, you will pay a uh, hundred bucks or, or more for these, but that's my hot pick for the week. Oh, and also uh, what got me to thinking about this was Eric Powell's The Goon, number two, comes out this week, and it has an awesome Alex Ross cover. It's really uh, fantastic looking, and that's what got me on this tangent. And lastly, uh, as of this filming late at night on Friday, it looks like uh, we dodged another bullet, and uh, God bless Ric Flair. Thanks. So I like Dan's pick. 
He comes more from the reading point of view and appreciation point of view. So he picks Alex Ross art. I'm a huge Alex Ross fan. So to me, he's always going to be hot. But what do you think about this, Jack? So Alex Ross is an interesting case. I love this pick. And I kind of don't like this pick. And I'll tell you why. Alex Ross, uh, from a pure money speculator, hasn't always been success for a speculator. Just because an Alex Ross ratio variant is on a solicit doesn't mean you're going to make money with that Alex Ross cover. Having said that, I have eyes too. Alex Ross art is as good as it gets. I mean, it is gorgeous. And he has absolutely been the selling point initially for Immortal Hulk. The story took over. But the initial sales really came off those strong covers. So I get why Dan would say Alex Ross is hot. The thing about Alex Ross is he kind of got oversaturated in the market at some point. Now, most of that was before many of us came in and became speculators. But I think that's kind of why we see him kind of go through a down market. But I think his star is rising, as weird as that is. And I think he's going to have his second act as kind of like a cover art heavyweight. We're seeing it through... Again, those Immortal Hulk covers. But another one to point out is look at what his Detective Comics 1000 did. It was by far the most successful cover. So I think that that, that has proven that there is a market on the secondary market for Alex Ross covers. And there's new fans coming in who are getting to experience Alex Ross art for the first time. So if nothing else, the fact that his newer stuff is being real hot is a bolo on some of that under ratio and kind of oversaturated early artwork that's out there on the market, really cheap, and can be bought up and shown and exposed to a new audience who will fall in love with it the way, Brian, you and I, and obviously Dan, like the artwork. Our last hot pick this week comes from the author of the Run the Table article on comicbookinvest.com, Clint Jocelyn. Good afternoon, CBSI Nation. This is Clint Jocelyn coming to you, right, Run the Table, do the CBSI Daily Poll and or Clint's Corner. I'm coming to you with another hot book of the week. Actually, this is the hot book of the year so far for me. It is the best well-written, executed book I've seen to date. This story is not going to make you a lot of money, but it's going to make you a hell of a fan of this book. And I'm going to tell you that that's the most important thing. I think we're losing that a little bit in our hobby is good old-fashioned great stories. And I'm speaking to another, another old and stronghold number one by Aftershock. This is the number one, first and ten. Great book, great cover. Really, it's a story about a guy who wakes up and tries to save a couple that's drowning in a car that went over a bridge. And what he starts to realize is he has powers that can tell him exactly when a person's going to die down to the minutes and seconds and why they're going to die. Also really tells a story of a conspiracy group that's kind trying to either stop him and or help him. I don't want to give away too much, but it's written by Phil Hester. If any of you know who Phil Hester is, he's a phenomenal writer, character, engagement. And he reminds me a lot of Ed Brubaker in a sense, but I would highly, highly recommend picking this book up. It is my book of the year so far. It is Aftershock Stronghold 1 and 10. So Jack, a lot like Dan, this pick seems to come more from the reader perspective. And I don't think he's wrong because this Stronghold book is a really great read. What do you think? Well, I think this is what makes this list great because last week we saw right here on the cold list, Andy Tomberlin from the Indie Spotlight series, Spotlight, Aftershock, 1 in 10 incentives being cold. And here we are just a week later. Again, we've got no rules on this list. And we've got Clint Joslin. He's pointing out an Aftershock book that he says is hot. And again, it's coming from a reader perspective. It's his pick, and that's the beauty of this list. This spec super team is put together to give you all kinds of different views. And I personally am not incredibly familiar with this book, but just him picking it alone makes me want to put eyes on it, check it out, and see if there's spec value there. So I hope you do the same. And with that, we have the hot list for this week. How do you feel about the hot list, Jack? I like it. Again, a diverse group of books, a diverse group of topics and kind of uh, trends moving in the market. Right. And it's important that we reiterate, we're not going down to specific issues. We already have the CBSI Hot 10 list that covers that. This is more from the combo community as a whole, more holistic view. So we're not going to go down to that level of granularity. And with that, we have our hot list for the week. So we're going to roll right on now into the cold list for this week. And we're going back to back with Clint Jocelyn mm -hmm. as he presents his cold pick for the week. Good afternoon, CBSI Nation. Clint Jocelyn coming to you with my cold pick of the week. I run the table, do the daily poll and or Clint's corner. And my cold pick of the week is Marvel tie-ins and Marvel tie-ins in general. It seems like every year, every summer, 
twice a year sometimes we're getting new tie-ins that uh, cross multiple books, multiple characters, making it confusing for the average comic book viewers. They go into an LCS and there's just a stone wall full of titles. And to me what it's doing is it's watering down the storylines, it is saturating the characters, and it's very unnecessary. And if they would just stick to the core storylines, developing new characters with new adventures that really make us as readers care about these characters versus stretching things out, I think that it would go a long way. So my cold pick of the week, Marvel tie-ins. Enough of those already, guys. Jack, I absolutely love Clint's cold pick. Marvel tie-ins, especially War of the Realms. I love the current War of the Realms story, but holy crap, there are so many tie-ins. I can't keep up with them. I keep saying time and time again, I really hope they have one big omnibus that has the whole story in it so I can catch up then. But my wallet can't keep up. My eyeballs can't keep up. And I think he definitely has a good reason for this to be a cold pick. I totally agree. I know that War of Realms has been a sales smash success for Marvel. And I know that it, they look at it as a whole, tie-ins and the main glory. Having said that, I just don't see the value in these tie-ins. As you mentioned, just from a reading perspective, it costs readers a fortune to try to read every single book to keep up with the story. On top of that, it's incredibly difficult just to keep up with what issues and what tie-ins even exist to go with the main story. All of those reasons make waiting for a collected omnibus better. Finally, we really don't get any spec value from these tie-ins. It's never really been a case. There's never been a time unless there's a first appearance like New Agents of Atlas. You're not getting any sort of speculation value from these stories. And I, finally, you just look at what retailers are having to pay. If we're complaining about what we're having to put out as readers to buy these issues, imagine as a retailer, if you want to be involved in a story like War of Realms, the sheer number of copies of total issues – all from the tie-in to the main story, the amount of money you have to put in just to participate fully in a story like this, it's just got to be astronomical. And it has to be something that kind of weighs heavily on a retail during the period of which these books are being released. And we're going to see more of this because look at Absolute Carnage. They just solicited the checklist for Absolute Carnage this weekend. And it's filled with tie-ins from all kinds of different stories. So we're going to see the symbiotes go nuts all over the Marvel Universe, which is cool. But also going to be, again, very draining on the wallet. So I agree. Tie-ins are cold. I think they're cold on every level and from every perspective. Right. And then not only are you having the actual tie-in issues that are named War of the Realms with the tie-in War of the Realms, Punisher War of the Realms, but the actual regular series are having tie-in issues as well. Like your Venom, your uh, Avengers. Like I think past this week, most Marvel books had some sort of tie-in to War of the Realms. So it's, it gets exhausting, especially if you're trying to pick up an issue and you don't really know what's going on with the whole story. But great pick, and I think it definitely deserves to be on the cold list. Oh, it is exactly why we created this list. Is uh, yeah, As you said, this list not created a step on the hot 10. It's more of a holistic view of the market. And this entry right here is something that would not get attention from something like a hot 10 or a not 10. And I think it is m made for this hot cold list to really kind of highlight uh, a trend in the hobby that is is really not profitable for speculators. If you're a new speculator getting in, avoid these these tie-in issues. It's, it's a, a definitely a financial pitfall. And we didn't even mention the multitude of variant covers. We didn't even get into that. Yeah. Yeah. So moving right along into the cold list, we have our resident Joe Cool again, Mike Morello. How's it going, CBSI? Mike Morello from Cover Tunes coming at you with this week's cold pick, hence the hat. Um, it's not going to be a popular one, but truth is truth. Uh, honestly, anything with this logo on it is freezing cold right now. I mean, this book, I, I couldn't sell this right now for a third of what it was worth a year ago. Walking Dead 1, I can get copies of that for eight, 900 bucks now. You couldn't touch that book for less than 1500 1750 raw. All the keys, Negan, number 100, everything is sitting in shops collecting dust. I don't know if it's because of the show or what it is, but, man, I'm telling you, if you've still got these, either stick them in a box, hope for a movie and hold on tight, or dump them, like, now. <laughs> Jack, it might sound bad to say this, but I'm so far liking the cold picks better than the hot picks even this week. And I think Walking Dead... It's kind of dead on arrival right now. Do you agree? 
Oh, I totally agree. First off, Mr. Joe Cool, uh, I want to be like Mike. It must be the sneakers, Mike Morello over there. Um, you can definitely tell he ate life cereal growing up because Mike oh, yes. likes it. Oh, yes. And, I mean, again, another great pick. And I, I actually agree with your sentiment. And I think there's as much value, if not more value, and I'll tell you this, this is a straight-up bolo, from the cold portion of this list. Because, number one, you're seeing buying opportunities. If, if there's potential there, what's down gives you potential to rise again. You want Again, you want to buy low and sell high. But it also tells you pitfalls and things to avoid, which a lot of people don't tell you. And Walking Dead, I agree, is a property that is cold. Now – if you want to be a naysayer, you may point to issue 191, the most recent issue that hit the market, which did pop on the secondary market with kind of that last page splash reveal of Rick's death. But again, if you watch the Bolo show, you know that I, I'm I'm very, uh, we'll say, um, I'm speculative that that's an actual death and not just a sales tactic. And I think it's a sales tactic either way, whether he dies or not, because Walking Dead is cold. Um, you have to look at the life cycle of a show. Walking Dead, I think, is our test case for TV speculation. It got really hot, hotter than anything. There'll never be anything like it. Um, Umbrella Academy's been the closest, and it's not even in the ballpark. And it got hot with the audience outside of comics, and that got so many of those early first appearances' attention. But, you know, once Abraham shows up and then dies, the show's old. I don't think that's a spoiler. But... Uh, you know, where's the value in the speculation in Abraham's first appearance once he's no longer a part of the show? And even a character like Michonne, who's still a part of the show, you know, anyone who ever wanted a copy has probably secured a copy. So the, the copies have dropped from their highs that they were. Now, the one thing I'll say, if I want to play devil's advocate about the future, is we are going to get Walking Dead movies. We are going to get origin story prequel type stuff. There is a chance and I say a chance because honestly, I bet against it that that early stuff could rise again with some of this new Walking Dead content. But I think that we're seeing the zombie trend slowly go down. I, I think we talked about it with the hot pick. This new age of horror is kind of changing what's popular in horror. So I think that the zombie post-apocalyptic stories are kind of they've been done. And I, and I think that Walking Dead has hit that life cycle that many TV shows hit where they, it's, it's been on a number of years. It, it's, it hasn't quite jumped the shark, but to some may say it did. It, it's gotten to a point now where the storytelling isn't as – feel as crisp and fresh as it was when the show first started. So for all of those reasons, we've seen depreciation in the books. If you want the books for your personal collection, it's cold. Now's the time to buy. If you're looking for speculation purposes, I think Walking Dead is probably one to avoid for now. And look at stuff like the Dark Horse things and Umbrella Academy and all of these new fresh properties that are popping up like Deadly Class and Happy, where I think there's still so much meat on the bone with those properties. It's probably time we let Walking Dead leave it alone, but put it in the Spec Hall of Fame. I agree with that. I also say if I see like those issues 1 through 10, 1 through 20, if I could find them super cheap enough, I would definitely pick them up and throw them in a short box and kind of forget about them because it's cold right now. It could be hot later. Plus, that book, that title, especially those early issues, they are almost could stand the test of time with the amount of impact they had on pop culture and the rise that they had with the TV show. I mean, AM, it was AMC was on King of the Hill for the cable markets for a while with that show. And those early issues, I do think I see value. So that you said before, with with it's cold and you can find it for cheap, now's the time to pick those up. But when you're getting up into later, like Ezekiel and some of those other characters, yeah, I think you're kind of, I would just let those lie. But those early issues, definitely the first Herschel's Glenn, the first, you know, those were the ones well, I'd be trying to pick up cheap. I think you hit the nail on the head with it being a classic series. I think you, I think you're gonna end up putting Walking Dead up there with Watchmen and V for Vendetta. I hate to quote another Alan Moore series, but in series is that are so classic and iconic that they're always going to be in demand of some sort. So yes, if some dealer who's maybe sacked a bunch of money in those key issues is ready to let those go cheap, pounce on those. Yep. Absolutely. I agree. So another great pick. Always love cool Morello. <laughs> call him cool Morello. <laughs> we got another great pick this time. This time it's the Cole pick from Topher S. What did you say? I used the same hot pick this week as Andy did last week. Screw it. I spiked his milk coke anyway. He won't remember. Besides, Dark Horse is still hot. Andy, what? I should still apologize. 
No, 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 no. Welcome back, kids, cosplayers, and collectors. It's your old pal, Fomo the Puppet, here with some chili picks. This week, we got the CW. Soon to be the next UPN. Does anyone actually watch Arrow anymore? Who cares? Who cares? Next up, the New York Knicks. What a week. I'm sorry, Mel. Truly. Better luck next lottery. I'll have Topher S. send you some white henny, a box of all leaf clovers, and hopefully Kyrie Irving. And finally, what y'all really came here for, poor, poor Malekith. I hear War of Realms is eating up the market share, but all the spec seems to be going Agent Sabat this way. eBay is littered with near mint copies of Thor 344. When will this book get what it deserves? Dark World 2, perhaps? Okay, speckers, I'm off for a mama's milk and coke. <laughs> the mass speculator will be back next week. Go Celtics. <laughs> so. I'm kind of hoping the puppet stays around a little bit, maybe mix it up with some ass, but loving these puppet picks. And for the cool pick, Topher is picking Malekith. What do you think, Jack? I love this pick. And first off, yes, I agree. I couldn't love the Masked Speculator more, especially as a fan of Lucha Libre wrestling. But at the same point, this puppet is hysterical. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know where this alter ego comes from. I'm a little more scared of Topher now. But man, the puppet's spot on. The puppet's got some spec skill, because I, I absolutely agree. You and I have talked about this again. Uh, we talked about this before on the Bolo Show. We talked about it. We have a comic market news report right now on the Civil Men's Comics YouTube channel you should check out, talking about Chris Hemsworth signing for more, more movies to play Thor. And what I talked about in that video is the Thor spec coming off of that news. There's a lot of, of Thor spec that's cold, similar to this first appearance, Due to, you know, the Thor movies kind of having been out, the spec has already been played out for it. And those char a lot of those characters have appeared, whether in a smaller role than people had hoped or maybe didn't appear. And I think uh, Malekith is one of those where he didn't quite get the shine that a lot of people wanted. And now we're going to see more Thor appearances. There's a renewed interest in Thor since the kind of slight character change, changing him to kind of a more jovial joking character so i'm real bullish on thor thor went from a character that kind of bored me to a character that i'm extremely interested in always commands the screen steals the show every time he's there i'm very excited for him in guardians of the galaxy and i think a lot of thor characters including angela including better ray bill including throg that's my big long shot james gunn cameo character i think a lot of them will come into play so i think Topher and the puppet are spot on with this pick. Yeah, and it definitely doesn't help Malekith with uh, how well received Thor Dark World was, but. No, that was kind of his downfall. Yeah. But, so, again, thanks, Topher. Well, thank you, Puppet Topher, for a great cold <laughs> pick this week. Rounding out our cold list for this week, we have indie spotlight writer Andy Tomberlin. PBS I Nation, uh, Andy here with the indie spotlight series. Uh, what's cold? Second prints with the same cover art. Like, come on, guys. You can do way better than that. Way better. And you'll sell more books. So, uh, second prints with the same cover art. Pretty cold. Jack, I'll continue to say it. I like the cold picks better than the hot picks this week. And second print comics with the same cover are cold. Oh, you hit the nail on the head. The cold picks this week are just home runs. Not again. I like the hot picks. But the cold picks are killer. And this one, not only is it cold with us, with speculators, with collectors, it, it was so cold that the publishers started to listen to us. <laughs> Mar Marvel, who gave us for the last several years, these colored box late printings. So you'd see the first printing, it would have that red box adorning the bottom in the trade dress. And then when it went to the second printing, that box would change to blue. And then it would go to third box printing it would change to green and then they would go to fourth printing and it would change to i think yellow and then it would go to orange and so on and so forth so some of the most popular books miss marvel number one captain marvel edge of spider-verse edge, edge of spider-verse number two exactly with the exception of that third print the, design yeah variant, the design variant which is a bolo i actually i think that that's a major long-term play in that book because it's the only book that changes the cover so for the very reason 
that Andy laid out there, I think that's if you're going at Prince with Spider Gwen, that's the one to, one to grab. Even if design variants don't tend to be hot in the market, but um, Riri Williams, which we used the image in this graphic, Riri Williams' first appearance, you know, her later appearances were all just color changes, and collectors got tired of it. They stopped ordering them, and retailers who speculated that collectors would want these late printing first appearances, and I think the Riri Williams one did it. Because those were ordered heavily by retailers. And I think they sat at a lot of retailer shops. I know Midtown ended up blowing them out for a dollar on their dollar sale, those late printings. And again, I think those were great buys. I think they'll have their day in the sun. I think Riri Williams will end up in the MCU. And if you bought those late printings, even as ugly as they are, I think you'll be happy. But now we're seeing cover changes happen regularly. People may not like the interior art cover changes, but hey... As a guy who was sitting here crying about these ugly boxes just a couple years ago, I'm thrilled to get new art. Plus, I think some of these splash pages that have been incredible have gotten their shine on the cover. You want a perfect example. Look at Avengers 682, a book that had Hawkeye on the cover. And the most talked about thing was the mask change with Hawkeye. Last page, splash page, first appearance of Immortal Hulk, maybe a cameo. But he shows up at the end. You get the Immortal Hulk trade dress on at the bottom, and then you get a second print variant featuring that as the cover. That is how you make money in the market. That's how you create a book that's going to be popular for a long time. I've loved it. And we've seen indie publishers go even a step further, creating completely new art for late printings, including books like Die, which has gone to a fifth print, while they've used the same kind of trade dress style. They've changed each and every cover. Um, and we've seen this throughout the hobby, that publishers are learning to change that cover art, even down to the smallest publisher like Mad Cave Studios, who has done an excellent job with their later printings. And then today we saw the release of these Savage Shirts releasing their Mondo style print late printings from Vault Comics. That those are absolutely amazing, stunning covers. I think you picked them on the Wednesday Warrior article on comicbookinvest.com. But those are absolutely stunning. They're on the Bolo list as well. And I think that the late printings Companies are just competing with each other now for who can do the coolest ones. And Vault really raised the game with their Vault vintage lineup. So I think I agree with this pick that if you're at this point in the game, if you're going to do a late printing and you're you're not going to change the cover or you're just going to do a simple color change, that is cold. DC Comics, I'm looking at you. <laughs> yes. So thank you, Andy, for your cold pick. And... I started to hit the transition screen, so I had to roll us back. Maybe you thought you were going to get an early look at the complete list, but no, no, sneaky, sneaky. That was just <laughs> me messing up, hitting the transition screen when I tried to move the mouse pad. So that's my mistake. But now we will present the list for the week, and that is coming up right here. So there it is, hot cold list for May 22nd, 2019. Make sure you guys comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of the list. As always, if you have some hot cold picks yourself, comment, put them in the video. You never know. They just might make it into the video as a guest pick. Jack, any announcements you want to make as we close out the video? Oh, definitely. We have so much stuff going on in Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel right now. Definitely check out the In Botlight series show that premiered last night with Arun Singh, the VP of Marketing from Boom Studios. He threw out so many bolos, you're going to need to have a pen and paper when you sit down and watch this show. We were talking Power Rangers. We were talking Buffy the Vampire Slayer. We were talking WWE, creator-owned comics. So much good info packed into that episode. Be sure to check that out. And be sure to check out future episodes of the Indie Spotlight series show on the way from Fault Comics, as well as the creators of IDW's upcoming series, Cantu. We also have, of course, tomorrow on Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel, the CBSI Bolo Show, where we talk about all of today's new comic book releases, all of the hot comics dropping. And we also want you to be on the lookout for our micro content, our comic book market news report, all of the mini videos coming from our various podcasts and shows. If you don't have two hours to sit down to watch, there's the Indie Spotlight series show or an hour to watch the Bolo show. You can check out small digestive content on the topics you want to see right on Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel. So be sure to be subscribed because you never know what new content we're going to drop next. 
I also want to put out there. Make sure when you check out that Indie Spotlight Series show, you comment on the video because we are going to give away a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number nine, the first appearance of Lord Draken, which is a major bolo that Arun puts out in the video. He said it's going to be a major book for Boom in 2019 into 2020, and we are going to give a copy away from the bolo back issue stash to one person, and all you got to do is comment. So make sure you check that out. Check out those videos and make sure you're subscribed to everything on Simple Men's Comics. Hit that bell so you get notified when we drop new content. Yes. And make sure you tune in to the CBSI Bolo Show tomorrow live as we are going to announce the winner of the SlabbedHeroes.com Venom Annual Number 1 9.8 Bill Sinkovitz variant. We definitely want to thank you guys for watching. Remember, the hot and cold list is exclusive to the video first before it hits any other form of social media. I also want to take this time to thank all the ComicBookInvest.com contributors who provide their hot and cold picks every week. They make the list, and we couldn't be done without them. This is Brian and Jack from Superman's Comics, and we'll see you guys next week.